Hello, today we're going to look at a cool little tool <laughs> called Trance Engine. And I was going to do this as a live video, um, but um, I just keep not understanding the technology and I keep screwing it up. So I, uh, you're going to get a recording of this. But to make it feel live, I'm just not going to do any editing. You're just going to see it live. Basically, because I haven't got the time <laughs> to do the editing. But the other reason is because I want to try Trans Engine, because I do want to try to create some trance music. And I haven't done that for a while. Um, and I haven't used this tool for a while. Now, I think it's one of these things. If we just go and click on load other chords here, this is kind of how it looks at the start. It's one of these tools that I think not many people have heard of. Um, but to me, it's kind of as useful as some of the other ones that are out there, like Scalar and uh, Captain Chords, in that it's just a chords generation tool, but it has a few nifty little features that um, help you along your way. And this one here is specifically there to help you with the trance. And I know that they do have the other ones, like there's one called House Engine. So, and actually there might be more that I'm not aware of. I do have House Engine, I do have Trance Engine. But um, I like trance, and <laughs> I'm going to now start using it and not waste any more of your time. So the first thing that I recall doing is you just need to click on this generate chord progression. Uh, you can actually import your own MIDI, but I don't have any MIDI. Um, and you can import your own chord progression. I don't have a chord progression. So we are here to create our own chord progressions. We're just going to start with the standard four bars. And um, there you go, you've got four bars with four chords that they've just given you. It's just going to play them and we're not going to bother listening to all of them. We can just go ahead and change the key. So we're going to go to G flat, which is one of my G flat minor actually, which is one of my favorites. Now, so the dice regenerate new chords, but thankfully they regenerate them in the scale that I want them. So let's just take a listen now. So it doesn't matter how f how much you speed up that uh, tempo, they are pretty slow chords. But um, if you don't like those chords, you just click on those dice and just keep listening until you get something that you like. Let's do another one. Okay, so that's cool. And you've got more here. So I think there's some um, other things you can do, like lock the scale. <clears throat> so I remember this one, lock scale. If you don't click it, it will just randomly pick any scale that it wants. Um, click on load other chords. We're not going to do that. Let's generate a eight bar standard chord. So you've got more here, obviously. And we'll just go back to the G flat minor and make sure that we are locking that scale in. And we'll just generate something. So that sounds pretty good. So I think once you got the chords that you like, press OK. And then you get to this screen, which is a super interesting screen. I kind of think it is. Uh, and I just press space and it's just playing. Um, I guess it's playing acid, and so we just this. Uh, we just click on this one and listen to this one. Listen to this one. So it's just playing um, arpeggiated versions of the. So you got all these arpeggiated versions of the uh, chords that you've just heard. So I can't tell you that the sounds are great, but um, if we keep going down, you see how it's kind of regenerating them all the time. And it's got these different types of, you know, descriptions. So we've got arpeggio. Let's listen to this. So some of these could sound good. And wherever it says MIDI, you can just drag the MIDI across. We're not going to do that yet. So let's go down a little bit. Let's, um, so it can make you bass line. So let's just take into listen to this. So I like more sparse basses, like kind of. You can see the shape, so that's pretty useful. So I like um, a sparse bass like this. And this one here is not bad. 
Some of these aren't bad, actually. Now, the other thing you can do while it's playing, you can actually uh, increase the swing. You can change the um, the tempo of the swing as well. Double speed it. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound good. So we'll just bring that down a little bit. And you can actually obviously increase the octave, whatever it says here, you can do it. And it's just using the sounds uh, that are within the application. So we just want chords. Now just take a listen to some basic chords. <laughs> So same chords, just variations of. Pretty cool. And I want to hear plucks, because I remember plucks being pretty cool as well. So we just unclick chords and basic. And we have plucks. Yeah, the plucks sounded pretty cool. Let's just bring this into, I don't know, I can't remember if it, we can actually bring it into an audio track. I don't think so, but because it says MIDI, doesn't it? So let's just see what happens if you bring it into audio. No, it doesn't, um, it just brings it into MIDI. So what I was hoping is that we could render to audio, but I don't think it can, unless there's some other functions that I'm not seeing here, and I don't think it can. And that's absolutely fine. So why don't we just call this one plucks, and I'm sorry if this is going to take too long. You can fast forward <laughs> until you get to the end, um, and we'll just call this next one bass, and a bass. Um, I've just typed something, you didn't see me type it. We'll call this one next one pads. That's an audio track, that's a mistake. We'll call this one pads. I really should use shortcuts. I actually made a video about shortcuts. <laughs> So I should be using them. And uh, I think finally we just want like a um, a lead, a lead sound. So we'll just re remain, rename this lead. <clears throat> now the thing about Trance Engine is, and I think it's cool, is uh, because you've got basically the same chords going to be played throughout. But um, just pluck this one here. So we're just going to take these plucks here. I'm not even going to listen to them. I'm just going to what I'm just going to see the shape of them because I, as I said to you before, I kind of like the sparse bass sounds. Let's just try to listen to this one. So let's move let's take a couple of different options. So this is the thing you can take a couple of different options from the trans engine and um audition them with the song if I can just get them into the right place <laughs> and we're going to now take some plucks no we've already done plucks sorry we're going to take some pads we'll just click on chords let's reset this and click on pad so we'll just take this one here into the pads and then we'll uh, find a lead so we reset this and look for a lead once again not too busy kind of sparse sounding let's have us listen to this one <laughs> that's not sparse um but you know that's okay we can just slow it down ourselves so you know what i think we'll just take this one <clears throat> so this is fine. It's all okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually now just get some sounds in. So I'm going to just go to Diva to get some nice um, trancey sounds. So I think for pads, we just use Diva for that. Um, Multicore, we'll just use a, a polysynth. We just listen to how they sound. So I just want to make sure it sounds kind of okay. Let's use a dream synth, actually.
So I think that one's fine. We're just gonna we're gonna calm him down a little bit. I don't want him to go too crazy. Fine, and just copy. We just might as well use Diva for the whole thing. <laughs> just copy that and use Diva for the lead. Let's listen to just get some different lead sounds and the presets. We're just using presets because I don't want to spend three hours doing this on a video. So let's. Take a listen. Rave, here we go, rave. That's too mental, I think. That's mental, but I kind of like it. So what I said to you before is it's a bit fast, um, but, you know, that's okay because inside of Ableton you've got this, no, this one this multiply by two function. This will just slow it down. Ah, uh, okay, so the problem with slowing that down is... It's not following the chords, but you know what? I think it sounds absolutely fine. And we're going to do the same thing with bass. We're gonna copy Diva and get a nice bass sound and I've got my own presets in here I'll just show you where I made them so we've got I call them synth wave presets and these are ones I made myself so we'll just take a listen to some of these bass ones just solo it <laughs> Let's listen to it together with the rest of the song. I think that one's fine. If you like these presets, I can um, <laughs> I can sell them to you. No, I won't. I'll give them away. Um, but if, only if you only if you comment and say you want them, because otherwise I'm not going to bother. And we do have this kind of slower bass sound that comes a bit earlier. Let's just put that there. And just line this up because there are four chords, they're going to line up. Okay, so we've got all that stuff happening there. I'm going to just duplicate this chord track and I'm going to duplicate this bass track but not the lead and what we're going to do is this pluck needs an instrument so i'm going to go and pluck up the courage <laughs> pluck up the courage to ring in a spy a spy has the best plucks in my humble opinion let's take a listen to these plucks so these are just presets I do find that the presets are, go way overboard on the effects, so I just mute the effects that come with the presets. That way I can just add my own presets. You know, add to taste. Right, so what we want to do is now just bring up a kick drum. Any kick will do because, I don't, as I said, I don't want to spend hours on this. I just want to show you guys the process, at least the beginning of the process. I think in my samples folder we have we have some kicks. No, they're in here. <coughs> this one. I think there's some kicks in here. Not actually kicks, but I do like this drum this drum loop. So I'm just gonna take this uh, for later. And I think I know where to find kicks actually. I usually know where to find everything because I'm on a video. I'm like nervous because <laughs> I'm trying to work everything out and talk to you at the same time. So um, I think we can use the this this combo. 
This is a combo of snare and kick. So I think it kind of does two jobs, which I think is fine. I think we'll just use this one there. This one, this, this one. This one. Let's unsolo everything. This could sound bad at the beginning, so just bear with me. So this sounds a little bit like dubstep, <laughs> which is not my thing at all. So we're going to make this a bit faster by just pressing this button. Now, I'm not, I don't really want any sound but that kick sound. I don't really want the rest of it, to be honest. So if I just take this and do this. It's better. So I'm just going to delete this other stuff. It's really hard to use. My microphone stand is broken, so I'm using this mic with my hand. It's really hard to use the mic <laughs> and talk to you at the same time and uh, use Ableton. I'm getting better at it. So I'm just going to loop this kick now, like this. I think that'll sound better than that snare. That snare didn't really sound good on this. Just take it to the end there. Take another listen. I'm sorry if there's some CPU spikes. Um, it's just my laptop is playing up sometimes. So I'm going to take this um, snare that I found before. I did like this a lot. Um, I could just tell it would fit the style. Yeah, you can just kind of tell. So we'll just bring that across as well. We'll just loop that baby. Okay, so just to make sure we don't get any spikes, we we should be deleting effects and other stuff we don't use. I'm just going to delete. I don't really want that. I'm actually going to delete Trans Engine. <laughs> this is a, a demo of Trans Engine. I'm deleting it. Um, I'm going to delete Trans Engine. I mean, that's pretty cool. It didn't take me long to come up with that. Obviously, I need to do some mixing, but... Because it's, uh, not, it's not really very well balanced. Let's bring in a um, let's bring in some side chain because I think that will definitely improve the balance of the. Well, just will improve it. We we'll just put that on the, just as is. We're just going to copy that. We're going to put it everywhere. <laughs> We're going to put it on the base and on the plucks. We're going to put it on the base. I don't know whether to put it on the lead, so I'm going to put it on the lead and just um, hide it and see how it sounds without it. Yeah, it doesn't have a big effect on it. But already the bass sounds better. Oh yeah. Those plucks. I'm just trying to get those to the left, uh, right hand side. Nice. So that's all really cool. And I'm just gonna <coughs> gonna try something with the the diva because I think the diva bass needs a little bit more um, filter cut off. So I'm just gonna expand that so it goes up. This is all just messing me messing around, to be honest. And then what, the other thing I want to do is those plucks, I think, need a bit of reverb. So I'm just going to create a return track and add an echo reverb into, into well, hybrid reverb, actually. Space. Let's just add this hybrid reverb into there. This is a preset. Don't have time to spend ages tweaking all this stuff. I've got loads of videos on how to use hybrid 
reverb and other um, reverbs. So let's let's be really clever and add some echo to the bass and see how that sounds. Add some to the plucks as well. Moment of truth. Bloody CPU. Probably not the best preset, to be honest, but that's fine. So just the last thing I wanted to show you before I disappeared um, into the wilderness is that thing I showed you before about that lead being too fast. Now, the reason it was I couldn't change it is because the rest of the song has the same chord progression. So if I sped it up or slowed it down, it would just be out of sync, right? So what you want to do now, I'm just going to put my microphone down because I actually need two hands to do this is we're just going to go into the adaptive grid and we'll just go and select um, halves. This is, not, this is not happening, isn't it? Oh, here we go. So we're going narrow uh, on the adaptive grid. I'm going to select... I'm going to select four bars like that and we're going to uh, control L that. So I'm just going to put my microphone down. So I'm going to just press Control E just to cut them, okay? And now I'm going to uh, move them away from the track. So what I've done is I've done that slowing down of everything. So it just extended the um, the bars to eight from four to eight. And that's really just to slow the melody down. But you notice I didn't do it on the kick and the the snare, as I don't really want to slow those down. Now let's see how it sounds. And this could be like a good counterpoint to the rest of the song. So let's just move it all actually. So this is the original bit and now let's slow down. And now back to the fast bit. So really, you can do quite a lot. Um, the trance engine is really just a starting point to get you to where you need to go. But it is so simple to use that sometimes simplicity is the best. I'm not going to spend any more time on this video. If you have any questions or you need anything from me, uh, the comments are the place to be. And if you want to see my face, I need 100 likes. I'm not going to get 100 likes. <laughs> If you want to see my face, because I never show my face, I need 100 likes. If you don't give me 100 likes, my face will never be visible until I get 100 likes on a video. In fact, actually, I may have got 100 likes on some shorts, but I need it on a proper video. Bye-bye.